so excited to have her here if you guys do not know who Haley Powers is then you need to be following some of the links that we're gonna be posting today you need to go to at Haley Powers music huge on Instagram you've got how many followers there now um, I think 37 yeah 38, yeah something like, like that. four awesome. times what I have so I've got a, I've got questions for you about how to grow my Instagram my goodness oh that's my amazing. gosh <laughs> so she's got killer content you guys got to check her stuff out on Instagram, and you just have uh, you've just started a, a YouTube channel now, right? Yes, started a YouTube music. channel. Yes, trying to be like you, more consistent yeah. with posting. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we can learn from each other. So, and I have some questions for you too about um, about Instagram, and, and we'll be talking about okay, all awesome. that and and, pro and content, providing content, and just all so many things today. So. Um, so what we're going to be talking about, friends, today is how to find more time uh, for playing guitar. And you've got a blog, right, on yes. this, on your website? Yes, and just posted a blog, like, last week. And what's your what's your website as well? Um, it's HaleyPowersMusic.com, so really simple. All right, so everything is at Haley Powers Music, so just search that, okay? And here's a couple things that I want you guys to do today is make sure that you go to Haley's Instagram. Make sure you go to her YouTube page. She's got some awesome blogs and that sort of thing and it's really going to help out with just getting a, a broader understanding you know if you're just listening to me you're going to get my opinion i try to keep things uh fairly uh subjective and uh but it's really important to get other other people's knowledge on this and um so this is how it's going to go ahead we're going to get to some questions today but i have some questions for you first All right. and then we're going to get to some questions from the viewers and yeah, and then we're going to jam, and then we'll do another jam at the end. Cool? Awesome. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay, so, um, and here, friends, really quickly, there's a couple things that I want you to do. First off, there is a post on Instagram right now, and we're going to be, of course, giving a lifetime membership away to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365. And in order to do that, do that you can go over to my page. Uh, four things that I want you to do today. Number one. If you're following me, then the only thing you got to do is like and comment. But the, the, the fourth thing I want you to do today is go to Haley Powers Music on Instagram and follow her, okay? And if you do that, 
we always pick a winner after the broadcast, and that will be announced on Instagram stories tomorrow. Cool? All right. And uh, this, friends, by the way, is the guitar I'm giving away on May the 4th. That's right. If you want to know more about that, go to yourguitarstage.com slash live. I'll be teaching you how to play chords all across the neck, like on the fly. Uh, it's going to be amazing. I've got a course for you, actually, if you if you sign up with that today. Okay? And anything else? I know we have other stuff. I know indeed we do. Um, oh, we're going to get into it. We've got all sorts of stuff today. Now, um, okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that as well. Okay, so, all right, Haley, uh, been looking over some of your stuff. And by the way, just seriously, really cool co content on Instagram. Thank you. It's like you really just have heart and and. The, the tones are great and everything is Aww, visually appealing. I appreciate and all those. that. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Super good. Super good stuff. So, you have a, a parts caster, right? You've yes. Got, uh, uh, now uh, I do. <laughs> okay. So tell tell us a little bit about that. Um, for those of you that don't, you know, know what a parts caster is, basically, it's just a a, a term that us players use for something that you just kind of piece together for whatever reason. So um, we're going to find out why that is right now. So you take a guitar like this or or any guitar and you're like, hmm, I don't like this and I'm going to change that. Uh, Frankenstrats, that's another name for it. So, <laughs> so tell me about your journey with your, with yes. your, your parts caster. Like why? Oh man. And okay. you're a Fender gal. Yes, yeah. I love Fender. Um, so this guitar actually I had found at my in-law's house. It was my husband's guitar from high school. Nice. So I was like, I found it in his closet. So it's got the juju on it already. It's like yes, he, yeah. exactly. Okay. And he okay. was like, I love this guitar. And oh. I played it and I was like, it actually plays. Like it didn't sound, like the pickups didn't sound great yeah. or anything. And I was yeah. like, it actually plays okay. So I was like gonna buy one anyways and looking on Craigslist and then I was like, can I just have yours? Yeah. So I took it home and then um, I put Lambert Tones pickups on them, which if you haven't heard of those, um, it's a really new company mm -hmm. and they're super nice. Um, yeah. So I put them in there and now I'm kicking myself because I'm like, why didn't I put those on like my Strat, like my actually nice guitar. So did it so. just absolutely make the guitar come alive? It lot? did, it sounds yeah. amazing. And now I'm like, yeah. I wanna play this at like all my gigs and stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> just doesn't stay in tune that well is the only thing. Yeah, I got a buddy who can help you with that. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah, hook yeah. me Greg up. Greg Ellis, my, my guitar guy, he'll he'll get you set up. Yeah. Do you do you have a parts guitar over here? You know, I don't. Believe it or not, I don't have. I'm trying to think of it not because this is not it. There's there's that room and then there's, I've got like five places where I keep guitars in the house because it's getting kind of out of control and I'm trying to think if I have any parts. No, I did it one time to a Kramer Beretta, which is like a. You know, now they're doing reissues, but it was one I bought in the 80s, and it was a, you know, like a seven $800 guitar. Okay. And and it had the one humbucker pickup, and this is when I was really into, like, hard rock and heavy metal, yes. which I still am. I still <laughs> love that stuff, but that's all I was into. So that's you know, all you need is a humbucker in the in the bridge position, right? And I wanted to have kind of that stratty sound, because yeah. I started listening to some guys who had that stratty sound, and I'm like, well, I want, I want to do that. So I literally, oh my God, I could kick myself now. I literally took this guitar apart and took a Dremel tool. You know what a Dremel is? I don't think so. Well, nonetheless, it shouldn't have been in my hands and I shouldn't have been touching my guitar with it. I routed a hole oh, in gosh. my guitar. Oh, no. It was so janky oh, and I no. screwed this pickup into it and it was, I mean, it would be as if I did it to this guitar. It was oh, such no. a beautiful guitar. <laughs> and then I ended up selling that guitar, trading it for like a cheap ass practice amp which is ridiculous and then a few years later i, I called my buddy and i said dude you saw that guitar because then all of a sudden i wanted it again yes that's like, always oh, how no. it is uh, don't sell gear that's i know what never says, sell anything sell yeah. yeah so um so that's my, the closest thing to my to to a parts guitar i just i yeah i try find it i find what i want and then typically i just leave it just but, get that but i yeah. get it but i get it so um so what else have you done to it so you, um you, that's really it that's it so that was my okay. first step yeah okay. so i started i think maybe in like the winter at some point so okay. i yeah i want to change out the tuning pegs mm -hmm. and everything and then i don't really know what else yeah so if you have any suggestions yeah yeah you know it's one of those things that i think you find something that you like from another guitar and you say if you can, if you can equate it to, okay, well that tone is coming from the nut, or that sustains, right. coming, you know, like that's the thing that always, always for me, I'm always like, God, I would have to, 
I would have to compare it A, B, same amp, same song, same room. I know, that's room, always yada, the thing. Yada, 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 yeah, know? it's hard to know, like, what makes this so great. Yes. Yeah, because yes. a lot of times for me, too, it's even just the neck, like, how easy mm -hmm. it feels to play. Mm -hmm. So I think I might switch this out. Is a, now, this is a baseball bat right here. I, like it, that, is, yeah. it, it is. It is. It took it's, me a second to get used to playing. It almost feels like an acoustic. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I love this one. This one I'm thinking about getting maybe a new bridge mm -hmm. just because uh, Jaguars, if you don't know about Jaguars, they're kind of a pain to get set up because you have to adjust the individual little saddles and then the bridge and everything. Yeah. So um, it sounds so great, but still sometimes it will buzz a little bit. So yeah. this might be my next one. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I need to get a parts caster at some point. And you just, should. Like, or a project guitar. It's but fun. I, <laughs> I have, I have a. Uh, God, it frustrates me to even talk about, it, but I have a, a a custom guitar that's been a year in the making. So. Ooh, dear God, once it comes that's out, exciting. once it comes out, I'm going to be so happy because it has literally been, um, it, it has been a journey. Oh, man. So, um, so the majority of the stuff that you do is on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And so why did you choose that as your, as your platform? Was that just like happenstance? Like you just started saying, hey, I'm going to start posting some stuff and then yeah. it happened? Yeah. Kind of. Honestly, like I started it a couple years ago because um, I wasn't like really playing out much or like doing anything. And I, someone had asked me to teach them guitar lessons and nice. I'd been playing in like my worship band, but that was really it. So I was like, oh, wow, this like could be like a fun business. So I started it originally because I wanted to teach guitar lessons. Nice. And then after that, like I really like that Instagram tends to be a little bit more like visually artistic yes. and stuff. So I really like that aspect. And um, I felt like I, there was like a community on there that yeah. once I sort of started meeting people, I was like, this is so awesome. Yeah. Like you can kind of make like online friends and yeah, stuff. So yeah. it's been really fun. Well, you do it really well. I can Thank definitely, you so much. I can definitely learn some lessons from oh you. Oh my gosh. I tend, I tend to be like, I, I have a, this love hate relationship with uh, social media. I guess most people do, but um, it's just like, I'm always like, oh, I'm gonna take a picture of this, or oh, I'm gonna play this and do this, and then I'm like, well, then the sound isn't good, and this oh, isn't that's good. that's my life. And I'm just like, I've gotta play, and then I just go back to playing. Yeah, so. But I'm trying to change that, because folks are folks are asking for, for more of that, and less, you know, they want lessons and stuff like that too, but they I think they wanna see some other stuff. Yeah, doing, so. I feel you. It's so to easy to get game. behind on yeah. content, so I yeah. already haven't posted in like a little bit, and I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> it stressed yeah. me out. Yeah, you can get a little, a little burnout. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's that's very cool. Very I love what you're doing. There. Thank you so much. Um, and so let's talk about before we get to some questions. Let's talk about um, how to find more time while playing guitar because you have an awesome blog and I read through it the other day. Thank you. And and that is an obsession of mine because bottom line, if you don't if if you think that you don't have the time, which I know that the majority of the people I saw the comments and and I hear it all the time. People say, I look, trust me, I don't have the time. Right. And. My wife always says this. She says, we do what it is we want to do. Yes. And I know that that, it's for some people, you're like, yeah, but. And it sounds a little insulting because it's, it's calling you onto the carpet and it's saying, you do what it is that you want to do. And um, for me, what I did is I cut a bunch of crap out of my life that I didn't need. That I felt like I was watching too much TV and mm -hmm. those sorts of things. I just started cutting stuff out, and then when I was watching TV, I would sit there with the guitar and play, which was one of your. Yeah. Which was one of your. <laughs> Get that uh, muscle memory. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, could you let folks know who who are having an issue with this, which is pretty much everybody? Could you let them know a few things that you you know think about in regards to finding more time? Like yeah. Um, I feel like for for me at least the biggest like time suck that I never notice is like phone or like TV stuff. Oh, yeah. So like I've started doing like when I'm like I don't know now anytime I look at Instagram I have that like Instagram setting that it tells you how many minutes you've been on there. I have that on my phone that tells me how many minutes I've been on my yeah. phone. So I try to be really intentional about because like you know like you'll get looking through Instagram and then I'm like on someone's like cat pictures and I'm like <laughs> this is great down, down, <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah so that's a really big one um and then I think one of the biggest things for me has been finding friends and people that like play because mm -hmm. like you know if you have like a gig on the calendar then it's like okay you have to practice for this yeah. and then you somehow can make that time yeah. so um, that has been great. And then even my friends that don't really play music, mm -hmm. like last year we started just having jams with them and people that. would bring whatever songs they wanted. Cause like, 
I especially have a lot of friends that like to sing yeah. and they're not in bands and right. they're like, I would want to be, but I just, I'm trying to get into it. So we just started having people over and it's yeah. so fun. We just play like cool. easy covers, pop covers, yeah, you know? Yeah. So that was great. Um, and I say that to, to, to my students all the time, like get together with at least one player. Yes. Oh and, my gosh. And so do you ever feel, because I know folks out there feel this, they're like, well, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. Like as if there is a day that you're ever ready oh, to do I'm, anything, I'm right? never ready for I'm anything. I'm never ready. <laughs> yeah. So you just, so what do you do about that if you oh, feel gosh. like you're not ready? Yeah, honestly, like... I, that was literally my entire year last year. Like people that are, you know, so good ask, would ask me to jam and I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, like why, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why? Um, but so yeah. I think the biggest thing is trying to know as much as you can and then coming at everything from a learning perspective mm -hmm. has been so helpful for me rather than like, I'm not good enough. Like I'm not ready for this. I have so much more to learn thinking mm -hmm. like, well, this is going to be how I learn, you know, and any time now that I get the opportunity, like with you today, like playing with a guitarist that's better than me, you know, I'm like, yes, yeah, sign me up because I'm going to learn so much more from that, you know? Yeah, you had something on your site that you said, and it was similar to that, and I, and I thought it was great. It was a great attitude because uh, it, it, was, it was something along the lines of, um, you know, you're having, basically that you're having fun, but that there's so much more that you want to learn. So it's like this this good balance of, right. of course, there's a bazillion things. I mean, there's a hundred techniques that I've, that I haven't even dabbled with, yeah. you know what I mean? And there's and the theory and everything else, but it's like this continuum, you know? Oh yeah. And it would be like, uh, it'd be like if I took my kid who's, you know, almost four and I said, God, you don't talk very good. You're you're, <laughs> you're stumbling over words, and my gosh, or what? Not walking right. Or, right. You know, it's like, dear God, he just started. So yeah. it's like, why would anybody? It doesn't matter on their age. I think sometimes people think, oh, well, I'm sixty, or I'm eighty, or I'm forty, or I'm twenty. I'm starting so late, I, mm -hmm. and I hear that a lot from from twenty year olds. I don't hear that from yeah. folks that are in their seventies. Oh, I thought that. Just in the moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just go, oh, I didn't get to start when I was seven. It's like it really doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all about just having fun and. Yeah. And like, honestly, like with like thinking about so many cool gigs that you have, like, so I'm originally from Central Coast, California. So there's okay. a bunch of wineries there yeah. with that. Like you just learn to play like some simple covers. You can like have this cool experience of getting to go play out in a winery and you just yeah. learn and get to do things that you never normally would have gotten to do. Yes. So there's so many other things. And like, I think people sometimes think like, I will either not play guitar at all or I'm going to be like Matea Sasada, you know, yes. just insane. Yes. So, but like, it's just so fun to get to come around and play with And people. that means you will never play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people will cut you out of the band. Yeah, it's like, and that's unrealistic. It's right. Like you just got to play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just have fun with it and think. Another thing I do is like anytime I do sit down to practice thinking, trying to play something different every mm -hmm. time because it kind of keeps that curiosity you yes. know than just playing like oh I already know this and then you kind of get stuck in this box but like honestly YouTube is so great mm -hmm. like I'll just find like a random lick or a song that I'm like that lick sounds weird and then I'm yeah. like all right let me figure out yeah. this you know it makes it just so much more like I don't know an interesting kind yes. of learning experience so Indeed. yeah that's a great uh, that's a great bit there to say you know to to doing the different things when you pick up the guitar. I, I try to make myself do that as well. And there's just those things that you grab all the time that, that kind of right. give you this little confidence boost, uh, like a little dopamine hit, like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but you you know how to play that. So what's next? And I yeah. think that's a good question to ask. Oh, oneself. yeah. It's like sometimes you get a lick that you like under your muscle memory, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can just kind of keep doing that lick forever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, have I done anything today to practice yes. really? <laughs> yeah. That's that's really good stuff. That's really good stuff, Haley. I love that. Um, so um, another thing, you know, in regards to time that that I always talk about is like for me, we were talking about it earlier about the Kemper because uh, I've I've got a Kemper amp here, and and it, if you look at it, you go, dear God, how would one even work that thing? Because there's a bazillion switches on it and menus and out and all the rest. But I'm not very good with that stuff, as I mentioned. So I, so what I do is. I figure stuff out when I need to figure it out. And I try to do this in life as well because if you try to just cover all the bases at all times, it'll feel good for a little while and then you're like, dear God, there's no way I can keep up with this. So like for me to sit down and read a manual for this thing, I would never do it anymore. Right. Just like 
just like okay I need to learn about you know getting my expression pedal set up and get it working so then I'll find a tutorial for it and I'll drill down because I really need it at that moment and then I remember it yeah but if I don't and people ask this about chords all the time they're like well how do you memorize thousands of chords and it's like well you don't do it all at once you yeah. just learn the ones that you need and then in the next song you'll learn a couple more or right whatever, or maybe you'll learn some jazz versions some seventh chords or what have you now you've just expanded your chord vocabulary but I don't I try not to take in information until I'm ready to assimilate it and make it stick. Otherwise, I yeah. just forget about it. Oh, I'm the and, same and, exact way. Yeah. 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 I think sometimes, too, like having like a song to put into context and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Or even, I hate to say it, like, but when you're on stage and you make like a glaring mistake mm -hmm. and then you quickly figure out what you did wrong, I feel like yeah. then you're like, okay, I will never do this again. Yes. Or like, there's certain things that are like burned into your mind like yeah. that. So, yes. embarrassment's good for that. Yes, it really is. <laughs> it's very fun. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, you know, when, when finding more time playing guitar, I find that sometimes you can make more time like with Haley's blog that you'll want to check out uh, and I think we have the link for that inside the description of the video any of the the links that I'm talking to you guys about today check the description of the video because chances are we have it there but check out her blog about that and then add on top of that is just focus what it is specifically that you want to learn because there's 10 million things to learn and if you think about that it's just going to be way overwhelming and nobody does that nobody intelligent at guitar does that mm -hmm. not for very long no nope. you may do that you may do that for a week and think that you're going to be able to do it but eventually you're going to be like i have to focus in a specific area right yeah and every every great guitar player does that i totally you know? agree um nice nice okay so we're going to get to some questions here how about that? All right, we're I'm ready. Just, uh, we're gonna get you some questions from. I guess we'll start. Let's start on Facebook today. Okay. So Instagram is in the house, Facebook and YouTube. But obviously, friends, uh, Instagram friends, we don't get to those questions. So you got to go to YouTube or Facebook to get to those questions. Cool. All right. So, and these are a little bit harder to read, just because I don't know why, but Facebook makes it like. Ter terribly difficult Facebook. To, to read these. I feel like I constantly get lost on Facebook these oh days. Gosh, I do too. Yeah, I, it's that's one I just don't do anymore. I, I can't. This is what I, I know. do. I know. I don't even, I like barely have a Facebook now because it's just so many things. There's so many things. There's so many distractions. Um, okay, so, and friends, if you would, please put a question mark behind your question. And if you can do it in all caps, that helps that I can see it better, quicker, all that good stuff, okay? All right. And so we'll, we'll jump back and forth between YouTube here. Okay. Usually Facebook, we don't have a ton of questions, but here we go. Here's Larry. Any recommendations on drum software so I can get some beats into my own songs? I don't know any drummers yet, but I want to start recording my songs. Ooh, that's a want, fun question. Do you want to answer that? Do you, do you have a specific app that you use? Honestly, like I use Logic for mm -hmm. everything. Like yeah. Logic and MIDI drums mm -hmm. is so great. And I'm actually taking a Udemy course right now oh, on yeah. the, like MIDI kind of stuff, like recording. But um, I mean, that's what I use. I love that. And you do you like the drummer in there? They've got um, that. Have you ever used that? Yes. So yeah. like I'm kind of learning like to start with the drummer and then like edit yes. the little pieces in there. Yeah. So and then just using like the little pad um, mm -hmm. on like the MIDI. Yeah. That's kind of what I yeah. do. What do you do? Yeah, I do the same thing. Like when I need when I need some drums, uh, there's a program called Logic. It's for Apple. I don't think they make mm -hmm. it for for PC, but yeah. there are other programs that are out there. Most digital audio workstations anymore have some sort of drummer built in. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of Logic, you pull it up and you pull a name up, which will typically denote a certain genre right. and the drums sound a certain yeah, way. Yeah, like, like Steve or like, yeah. yeah. Steve, I love Steve, or Kyle. Yeah, Kyle, yeah. Kyle. 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 yeah. We all um, know him. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are names of patches like Half Pipe, which would be like, you know, punk or skate music or something like that. And it'll get you a basic ballpark and then you can make it busy or make it simple and yeah, I mean, like, yeah. you want to play music. You don't want to sit there and right. have to come up with stuff unless you're you're quick at it. So yeah. you know, taking a course and learning about that is yeah. Very helpful. Most of the drum loops though are really good. Yeah, I think at least. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. 
yeah, drum loops, uh, you know, bottom line, you have to get, the only way to get started with this stuff is to get started. Nobody knows it at first. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts at zero. Everybody's like, uh, what do I do? Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. So, like, don't think you're behind in any of this. Everybody starts at zero, so you got to dig in. Mm -hmm. But, it, yeah, drum loops, uh, GarageBand's a good one. GarageBand, in fact, is the free version of Logic and to be honest with you, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Except there's so you can you can record more tracks and what have you with Logic. I oh, think. Yeah. yeah there's the like technologies. more features, but honestly, like if you start with GarageBand, then it's great because you can easily, if you are like I'm very serious about recording, you can then get Logic later, and you'll yes. already know how to use everything. Yeah. So it works like so similar. Yeah. yeah. So if you have Apple, GarageBand is the way to go. It's just super easy. Uh, Larry's also asking. What's the difference of using a rack amp for gigging as opposed to a regular tube modeling amp? Uh, what does a ra rack amp do? And if any of these you're just like, um, you know, you just let me know whether you want me to answer them or not. Or mm, yeah, I don't know if okay. I would have good advice on that yeah. one because I use the same amp. Yeah. So. so Larry, really the only difference between a racked amp and a standard amp is that you it's got racks on it it's got like clips that you can put it into something there's absolutely nothing different about it but with that being said usually you're not going to find a combo amp so like one with a speaker and what have you in a rack usually it's just going to be the head so in the case of what I have here I've got a, a Kemper amp uh, but they have a racked version of it and it just means you can put it in a rack so it doesn't really do anything differently other than maybe save some space you know but then they're not very convenient Otherwise, if you're carrying them, they don't have handles and stuff. Uh, they're they're quite cumbersome. So I've done, I've had both. I've had plenty of uh, rack mount gear growing up, and then now I'm kind of going old school again. Yeah. You know, in the '80s, everybody was like, if you had this like massive yes. rack of, of, of all. You know. <laughs> I'm just going light on all of my gear lately. Yeah. I feel like now I'll look at some amps. I'm like, that is great, and then I picture myself lugging that down the stairs in my apartment, and I think, is this worth it? No. <laughs> That thing is, is terribly heavy. I've got a, a oh, black, really? yeah. black star amp that I'm looking at here, and, and that thing is a, a beast. It's only a 12 inch speaker, but that cabinet's heavy and the oh, amp yeah. is heavy. And that's lighter compared to two other amps that I have in the garage that never go anywhere. They just sit there. So I, I need to sell them. I know. Like one has it's a so 412 those, cabinet. Though. It's like. I know. I'm like maybe house shows. <laughs> just never yeah. leave them. <laughs> yeah. But a good a good. Uh, so you what do you use for an amp? So I use a Vox. Um, right now it's an AC15, and mm -hmm. then Those I have are great. yeah, it's mm -hmm. so great. And then I have a, a Fender Blues Deluxe. Okay. So um, pretty simple. And then I'm actually borrowing a new Vox from um, my future brother-in-law, I guess now, uh, um, but yeah. it is a Vox, but it's hand-wired, mm -hmm. so it's still the AC-15, but it's way bigger than mine. It looks very fancy, mm. so, and it sounds really different, so really? it sounds great, yeah, wow. and it's, like, that is a lot, like, I could, mm -hmm. I don't think I could even lift it, so. Yeah, yep. you have a, that, now, that, that Fender Junior is about the lightest tube amp, 12-inch speaker, that, not, that's why I recommend that one all the time, it's yeah. just... That is it does a trick. Amazing. Yeah. It sounds great too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you and you've got a great board. Oh, thank uh, you. Haley's got some great pedals on there, so. Um, okay. All right, we're still spinning through Facebook and then we'll pop over to YouTube in just one moment. Uh, can you recommend a good textured pick? So William's having an issue with regular picks slipping mm. in his hand. Do you have any uh, any wisdom in that? in addition to a good textured pick like any anything you want to say about that yeah um okay so i actually like literally last week have learned a lot more about picks because i was using fender mediums um and then um i actually jammed with someone and they gave me a bunch of these like really really hard picks here and they actually are great and it kind of makes you play a bit faster because the pick doesn't Does bend give, yeah yeah so i've kind of been using those but um ernie ball has these great like little kind of harder picks that mm -hmm. are a little bit grippy and i've I kind of yeah. liked those. Those could possibly help. Mm -hmm. Have you found yeah. anything good? Yeah, that's great. I think, yes, I have found, they're called Brain Picks, Snarling Dogs. I don't know if that's, I think the company is called Snarling Dogs, and I believe that we have these in the store. So Snarling Dogs, Brain Picks. So they maybe Snarling Dog is like the company, and then Brain Picks. I don't okay. know why Brain. <laughs> I don't, but they have <laughs> Love like, it. yeah, but they have like, 
like divots on there and it really does you know stay in your hand now I just use that for acoustic but they're they're thinner at least the ones that I get I get the purple ones and uh, and you can really dig in the pick doesn't fly out of your hands but with that being said William in addition to that it really is just a matter of getting used to the pick because everybody drops their pick at first mm -hmm. especially if you're if you're you know if you've been playing for like under a year I would say and you're using a medium pick then that pick chances are it's flying out of your hands all the time because you're just not accustomed to it yet so one of the things I say to do is if you're especially if you're playing acoustic guitars use a thinner pick if you're playing electrics then you're doing more intricate type stuff you want a thicker pick like mm -hmm. you said because you know you got to think about it like surgery right you would use something that didn't have any give as opposed to something that that did or if you have longer hair right you're going to use a brush with bristles that bend more than you would a comb right Haley's not going to be using a comb. Mm -mm. I have a lot of tangles <laughs> in this hair. <laughs> you got to use. A we got to get those out. Yeah. So if you're strumming all six strings, you want to use a thinner pick. And if you're if you're doing more intricate type of single note soloing type of stuff, ch chances are a medium to a heavy gauge pick is going to work better for you. You're just going to get used to it better, quicker, that sort of thing. But just literally putting the pick in your hand and walking around with it you know, driving, whatever, just have it in your hand because what it's going to do is it's going to subconsciously get you to get used to it. I always use the analogy of I've been brushing my teeth with my left hand for the last like maybe year because oh, I, uh, I heard somebody say it, uh, this um, uh, Jam, Jim, Jim Quick or James Quick. You yes, ever I've heard this. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The Asian guy, super smart, super fun, um, love that guy. But he said to do that yeah. and that will, you know, help. Uh, I don't know, it somehow helps with the other side of your brain and what it does is it's building new neural paths because your brain's like, I don't know what, what to do What am I doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've been doing that and because of that, I'm, I'm used to brushing my teeth with my left hand. I do it every single time. Now, of course, at first it was like, <laughs> brushing my eyes. And, <laughs> no, and that bad. But you know, you're, it doesn't feel normal. So anything that we do a lot will feel natural. Anything you do once or twice is not going to feel natural. Okay. So that's what I would say in addition mm -hmm. to that, you know. All right. Coolio, coolio. All right, friends. Uh, we're going to jump over to YouTube now. And while we're doing that really quickly, something I want you to do, I want you to go visit at HaleyPowersMusic.com. Check her out on Instagram. To check her out on YouTube. All right, and check her website out, HaleyPowersMusic.com. It's got some cool blogs there. Yeah, Thank you. Super cool stuff. And um, Oh, and also, we have a post today. If you would like to win a lifetime of guitar lessons, here you go, right there. That post right there that you're seeing, um, follow Haley Powers Music, and you can see that she liked it, so you, the only thing you got to... Well, no, you won't see that. Forget that. Um, <laughs> All right, so do this. So go to Haley Powers Music on, on Instagram there as well. Like her page. Of course, you got to be following me. Um, and then like and comment, okay? Cool. All right. And, uh, and then also, friends, if you would like to be part of the ginormous broadcast that we're going to be doing on May the 4th, where I'll be teaching you how to play chords all over the neck, like on the fly type stuff, Join us. Um, go to yourguitarsage.com slash live. I've got a whole course for you, literally, to prepare you for that that uh, that webinar. And then also, we're going to be giving away over $7,000 worth of goodies, including my personal Gibson Les Paul Dark Fire. This is, like, legit. This is so first cool. run. I know. I'm, I'm actually hate to see Can it I go. Can I enter? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. I hate to see this thing go, but, it, it's, um, but it's got to go. It's time. You know, it's just like... You're looking around. You say, I've got a few I guitars. I do, yes. So, like, I can, I can spare it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're heading over to YouTube now, friends. Please, question mark and all caps, if you would, okay? All right, and I bet you, I'm guessing that we probably have some Haley Powers followers in here as well, I bet, because I thought I just saw someone... <laughs> Giving a shout out to you there. Uh huh. It's lot, lots of kids in here today. Mm. 
no questions. I know. Okay, here we go. Um, okay. Will you phone me back? Jerry said. Okay. <laughs> Eric, when we have Brian of Active Melody as a guest, sound music, I don't know um, because I don't know Brian from Active Melody. I don't know him. Um, but I'll check him out. I will check him out. Uh, oh, you're married. <laughs> you got, I'm sure you get that a lot, right? All right. Um, so what do you mean when you say on the fly? Albert, what I mean by that is, so on the fly is like if someone says, okay, E minor. B7, A minor, C, you would know where those chords are, right? So just like that jam in the beginning here, right? This, this jam, uh, let's see here. Okay, so what I did is originally I just put this chord progression down, which is uh, E minor, A minor, C, B7, E minor, and then a B7 again. Okay, and so that's what we're hearing right there. E minor, A minor, C, B7. So what, what I mean by on the fly is I would, uh, so I've got these chords that I'm playing in the open position, right? And Haley and I were doing this just right before the program, and, and we'll be doing this again um, for one other tune um, during the broadcast. But, like, you have a basic structure, right, of the mm -hmm. chord progression, and then you kind of riff off of that on the fly. So, like, if you know that this is an A minor, and you know that this is an A minor, then you can kind of come up with some different parts. So, for instance, this is the first part, right? A minor, and I'm going to play something over this in just a second, and then a C, and then a B7, so I'm going to think differently across the neck now, so I'm going to play this E minor right here, and then here's an A minor. and then you're like, well, what else can I add to this? And if you heard me mention when, when the questions that I was asking about if this broadcast is going to be for you or not is how to find instant inspiration, right? Uh, Haley had mentioned, you know, going to something different, like playing something different all the time, and that's great. And what this does is it, it keeps you in the zone of something similar, but it pushes you to go, okay, what else now? Mm -hmm. So... It's like, of course, I know the chord, so you're not s starting completely from scratch, but you know you, what the chords are, and then you can say, okay, well, now how can I move that up the neck? Where can I play this in some different places, different riffs, adding different melodies and that sort of thing? So it's really cool because it, whenever I do this, I go, oh, well, now that, that sounds kind of cool. I yeah. like that. And that's the, the hope that you're wanting. You're wanting to get that feeling of like, oh, wow. This is something new for me. Yeah. You know? Sometimes almost I feel like even just like expanding like one note at the t at a time, you yes. know, and starting with like a two note solo and thinking that like little rhythm element and yeah. then slowly adding things on once you're kind of like, all right, I've sort of bored of this, you yeah. know, that and then you feel really comfortable like playing on the fly kind of gradually because you feel like you really know something, you know, yeah. to build off of. Maybe we can maybe we could even do something like that in real time here in the middle. Ooh, that maybe sounds fun. Work with a little uh, we were working with a little funky thing before, but maybe we could just kind of start from scratch yeah, and just kind of riff like off of it. Yeah, let's so do we'll it. do that here in just a moment, okay? In about five minutes, we'll do that. And we'll just literally uh, kind of develop it, okay? So you'll see it in real time. You'll hear mistakes and everything, and so that's because that's real life. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and anybody who has it, who doesn't make mistakes in front of you just means that they've made the mistakes earlier. That's all it means because it's, <laughs> Cut absolutely, it out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely impossible to find out what to play unless you find out what not to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, someone could say play this scale or whatever, but unless you're just being confined to this to this specific scale and whatever theory you know, um, 
you you have to make mistakes. You have to search a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be really boring. And you're oh just yeah. Playing, playing what's what's safe all the time. Yeah, you know? it's experimenting. Yeah. Uh, the giveaway is May the fourth. So we have a link inside the description of the video, yourguitarstage.com slash live, you know. Um, Tusk is just a $100 word for plastic. Oh, I wish it were just that. Uh, <laughs> less. So have you heard the, tu the Tusk uh, nut? Like this, this has a Tusk nut. It's not um, like real Tusk, but it's like synthetic. Okay. Have you, have you heard any guitars with those in them? I don't think I've heard any. It's I haven't like compared it. It really is exceptional. Um, it, it's very resonant it makes the guitar louder and it is people are people are loving it so that was uh, what i was going to suggest for the nut for that oh guitar, if you wanted to all right kind of up it. yeah i like that your blog is super Haley. Oh, thank jackson you Sagan. jackson yeah so uh les paul moray yeah so i don't know what your experience is with tusk but i really dig it and i personally don't I don't know if someone says this is bone or this is plastic or whatever. I typically don't, like we talked about, I'm not like, oh gosh, all that sounds coming from the nut. Like, <laughs> how, would, how would you know that? You know? Right. It's like there's so much more to the guitar that that I typically don't focus on one particular thing. I, I, I kind of look at it holistically. and uh, But I can tell you that there's something about this Faith guitar. I've mentioned to you guys before, right? I'm going to do a review on this thing. Uh, it's, this is the Blood Moon, and this thing resonates like no acoustic I've had before. It's it, and it has a tusk nut. So, hmm. for what it's worth, uh, the fishing life. I've been. How long have you been playing guitar? I've been playing for thirty-ish years, thirty plus years. I started when I was fourteen, so that'll tell you how old I am. I'm like almost fifty. So, it's been a, it's been a little while. But with that being said, it doesn't matter how long you've been playing. Haley, how long have you been playing? Oh, gosh. Since, I don't know, maybe like 16 years. Okay. Yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. 16, 17 years. Yeah. Something You're like old? that. I'm 28. Okay. Okay. So there you go. And, it, you know, it doesn't, it's like we had Colin in here. The, did you see the Colin Hill I finger think picker? I, saw that. Uh, I forgot how long he's been playing. But, like, I think it was under five years. But he's an amazing finger picker. Yeah. And, you know, it really has to do with your attention, like whatever it is that you're doing, like your focus and your drive and your attention and how much you're practicing. Uh, the years don't really matter that much. I totally agree. Yeah. That's not probably maybe the most common question I get asked, like, yeah. how long have you been playing and stuff? I'm like, it doesn't matter because, you know, you meet people that have been playing for like 50 years and mm -hmm. they've kind of just settled in. Yeah, like kind of played the same things. But then yeah. I'll meet like, you know, high schoolers that I'm like, how are you so good? I know, <laughs> like, right. Been it's playing embarrassing. For... I know. Yeah. <laughs> and so we could see that guy and go, well, okay, I understand. He just kind of sat there and then you see the other person who's playing so well and you go oh yeah i know i'm like oh, have i been playing 16 years yeah uh, okay let's see here okay here we go hi Haley. i'm wanting to play guitar in the worship team at church i've been playing for two months minus one month what do you suggest i work on most Ooh, oh. that's awesome mm -hmm. um so i feel like for worship music um, some of the biggest things is doing um, like different inversions of chords. So like starting a chord with like a different note than I guess the first note of the scale. Mm -hmm. So that's something really helpful. And then when I started playing at my church for like worship stuff, honestly, the tone stuff was a really big learning curve because it's so much knowledge on like delay and reverb and amps and having the right level of overdrive. Yeah. So like that is definitely a really um, important thing to kind of get down. But um I don't know, I think once you do start playing worship, you'll find that like there's a lot of things that translate to a lot of other songs in it. So um, yeah, I would say the inversion chords, a lot of like sixth and tenths, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. do you have anything to yeah. add to that? Yeah, no, I hear people talk about that all the time for worship. So, uh, you know, when Haley says a sixth, what she's talking about is an interval of a sixth. So, um, Let's see if I can give you an example here. So, like, if you're playing, let's do this. So, so if I'm playing one, two, three, four, five, six, 
um, that kind of interval or a lot of times in worship you'll hear it like let's see if I play oh, that's a six two one two three four five six so what it means is if you have whatever the one is if you play through the scale one two three four five six and go to the six play the one and the six together it creates this kind of cool sound so like uh, let's see if I were to do that over what I just played there so this is on the fly this is the stuff I'm, I'm talking to you about so like if I did Let's see. So the chords are E minor, A minor, C, and B7. So I'm kind of working some of this out. So uh, I could play my, a, my E minor like this, my A minor like that, my C, and my B7, something like that. So you'll probably hear a mess up here, but that's fine. But so it might sound something like this. intervals like uh, for me a lot of times like I'll try to look at like how I can shadow chords um, since like a lot of the chords you know they are not going to get too crazy like jazz chords in worship maybe like minor sevenths or something like that mm -hmm. every now and then but like kind of trying to look at the chords and uh, figure out like interesting little um, kind of two note things or maybe three that you can kind of hold out and then adding enough like delay onto it that it can kind of fill up a whole room mm -hmm. um, Especially like this is something I didn't really think of when I started um, playing at church is how much like filling up space matters. Mm -hmm. So when I came in, like I didn't really have very much of a pedal board at all, but um, when I started like learning more about it, like the worship pastor was like, oh, I really like this guitarist because he just really fills up the room. And I was mm -hmm. like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of start finding ways. Um, it's not necessarily always even like more reverb or delay, but kind of how to use those that it sort of will keep going and sort of have nice, almost like a nice like pad sound behind yeah. everything. Yeah, so like just like, like what we were doing here, well, there you go, you've yeah, got like something. Doing... My guitar didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's just that's just delay, but something with some nice reverb. Oh, you know what else is really helpful? Um, is doing that like um you know the kind of blue scale shape that like you're using that like kind of D chord mm -hmm. um when the root note is on the A string. There's so many ways you can shadow chords with that. Okay, you'll have to show, so, show us what you're talking about there. Okay, so like, say we're doing this. That's the kind of blues scale here, the major, mm -hmm. I guess, scale. Mm -hmm. So doing a little D shape out right here. So there's kind of ways that you can basically just like change the chord by adding just one note on there. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I found that's helpful. Yeah, yeah. Useful. Um, let me check. Yep, it is. Let me turn it up. Sorry guys, we're having some little audio issue here. Turn my, turn my mic up. Is that better? We'll find out. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Um, yes. Yeah, that's great stuff. Um, and, and so, you know, in worship, you've got a lot of instruments playing and so if everybody's just playing full out all the time it can be really obnoxious right yes so you kind of just have to have your little part it's almost like if you're conversing with 12 people or a bunch of people everybody can't be talking all at the same volume and at the same frequency 
it's like there's give and take. So you say what it is that you need to say when you need to say it, and then you back off and you mm -hmm. make sure somebody else needs to say what they need to say. Yeah. And if everybody's playing by the rules, it sounds beautiful. But if everybody's talking all at once, then it just it doesn't. But literally, if you have a bunch of people in a band and everybody's playing sparse, it can sound fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I always think of like the song like I always try to not play on one part like I'm very intentional just to help create more dynamics yeah um and then another thing I think is like learning to play with a click mm -hmm. like or like turning up the kick drum mm -hmm. and um and like bass and stuff I'll usually have that if you're using like in-ears or something like up more in my mix so that way yeah. you can really stay on the time and like um, I'll even use like a delay pedal, like a tap tempo to like tap in the time. So everything's kind of syncing up. But yeah. yeah, definitely. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Listening to what is everybody doing and yes. not just doing your thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, okay, good, good. All right. So someone's asking, uh, Talak is asking, do you do vocals as well? Mm, good question. Um, I do actually do some vocal stuff. I've never really wanted to be the lead singer. Um, my sister sings, so I've kind of grown up singing harmony. Mm -hmm. I actually used to be in a family bluegrass band when I was young, uh -huh. so that's my past. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, I like singing harmony actually a lot. I just and I can I sing fine, but I don't think I have this it's not like your, it's not what you want. Exactly. It's not your heart. Yeah. I like playing guitar. It's yeah. just I. I think it's more fun. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. So uh, Walter's asking, Haley, what is your go-to scale or mode when you solo? Mm, um, good question. Okay, so I honestly feel like uh, just the pentatonic scale has served me well, <laughs> like mm -hmm. just moving it from major to minor, and then, you know, I'll, I'll add in more notes. I really like the Dorian scale, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, but yeah, I'll like add in more notes, but sometimes I feel like keeping it really simple and having this sort of structure in my mind of here's kind of what I have to work on in the different positions of the pentatonic scale. It makes it sort of more fun for me to use my ear to create melodies rather than thinking like, okay, now this makes sense, so I'm gonna do this, but really trying to almost just know like, working around something can kind of give you that ability to then use your ear and just practicing enough to kind of be creative yeah. with what you have. Yeah. I don't know. Do you yeah. have one? Um, you know, I, th I would say pentatonic is definitely, is definitely the one that's just always there. Mm -hmm. And it just, the shape of it, it just seems to always work. Right. You know? uh, if I'm, it kind of depends on the music. I feel like with blues or with funk or something, that the pentatonic just lends itself really to that. Yeah, it's all the, the good notes. <laughs> yeah, but then the more melodic it becomes, like the chord, like the chord progression, like this thing that we did in, a, in E minor there, like that lends itself to playing kind of the whole spectrum. I feel right. like. Right. Yeah. You know? I guess it depends on what genre you're playing yeah. too. I'm just now starting to learn more jazz stuff, which is like, uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. now I'm like, I don't even know what my favorite scale is. Right, <laughs> so yeah. many options. It's, yeah, it's all over the place, right? Um, okay, so do you want to, um, let's get to one more question and then maybe we could come up with that, come up with a little jam here, right? Kind of like in real let's time. Let's do it, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, Haley, do you want to say a little bit about your guitar journey, how you managed to go from zero, and how you're able to play solos, including Bohemian Rhapsody solo? So I haven't seen that one. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know if I played that. <laughs> okay, you feel like I might have <laughs> But thank one. you. I would like to. Yeah. But um, well, can you tell about your your guitar journey? Yeah, so, um, so I played, you know, in junior high and stuff. My dad is, like, my guitar hero. So he, oh. uh, yeah, he, like, uh, let me, like, play in his band, some of them when I was, like, younger and stuff. Um, and then I went to Nashville. I moved here thinking like, I really want to play guitar. And like, when I got here, I honestly got like pretty intimidated and uh, surprised. Easy to do. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if like, I'm cut out for this. And you know, I was practicing, but I wasn't like, I was playing in some bands, but not really out a lot. And then, um, really it wasn't until a few years ago that I really just kind of felt like, um, like I just kind of missed it and really wanted to start playing. So like I mentioned earlier, like someone had asked me to teach them guitar lessons. And so I started getting into that and then created my Instagram and started getting just more playing opportunities through that. Um, 
And so now it's kind of crazy. Like I, I swear last year was like my year of anxiety because I kept getting these new opportunities and I was like, I'm not ready for this. So um, it's kind of just been like learning um, little bit by little bit. But now I'm playing in, I guess, three different bands oh, that I love. Yeah. yeah. So like if you're looking to go, you know, if you're like not playing guitar at all and sort of looking for like ways to get into that, like just connecting with people to jam and finding those little ways to get into it and, and practicing a lot. Like, mm. honestly, that's like such a big part yeah. can really start sort of leading you to little things and you start getting once you're good at the opportunities you are getting you can start kind of getting more and more that mm -hmm. you know you feel more prepared for yeah so yeah no one goes straight to Carnegie it's like exactly yeah uh, great questions well we will get to some more questions here in just a moment um, so but in the meantime yeah go ahead and get your question more questions ready but you guys have been doing great so we'll, we'll do something um, here maybe with we talked about doing something a little funky is that cool let's do, do it that? yeah something, something with like a, um, what happens if we just did something like, um, I'll just start with something simple, like okay. just going back and forth between E and A, okay. and then we can build the chords from there, like whatever kind of thing we want to do over the top of that, but maybe something like, um, um, something like that. Love that. Yeah, and that's does that, fun. Does that work? Yes, let's do okay. it. So we've li we're literally just kind of doing this on the fly, and this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. So let me, let me put this to, let me loop this, and then we can, uh, and then we can start noodling over the top of it. And All right. I'd like to see what kind of some, some different things that you might be thinking of here. So, um, so let me loop this here. So it's going to go something like this. I don't know if I like that tone, so hold on. what we're going to be talking about on May the 4th, but this is this is what we guitar players do, right? To, to inspire ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do a little jam. You use Logic, I'll use this, uh, the, a looper pedal, but something that's just going to keep something repetitive going so that you can riff over top of it. Because if it doesn't go a few dozen times or a few hundred times or whatever, you, you don't get a chance to kind of mold the clay and, and come up with stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Haley, I'm gonna just let this run for a second. All right. Okay. And uh, and we could just kind of start noodling over the top of it and just have fun with it, soloing or, or doing whatever. All right. All right so I'm just cool. gonna let it run. Okay. And you guys in real time will see mistakes and cool stuff and all sorts, right? So. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sometimes something cool comes out, sometimes something not so cool comes out, but bottom line, it's like you're just kind of having fun, and if you don't like that chord progression, like I will literally just sit here with my looper and just come up with something until I'm like, okay, I like that chord progression, it speaks to me. Yeah, there's and something about it. Over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not so much a funk guy. I'm, I, I, everything I do is so moody. My, my wife laughs because everything, <laughs> everything I do is in a minor key. <laughs> I love if it. It's, if it's in a, a song in a major key, then I put it in a minor key. <laughs> God, <laughs> so depressing. Yeah, but I'm not like a sad guy. I just I love. I, when I, I was a kid, you. I listened to everything was minor. Everything was like Bach or oh yeah, you know. Oh my gosh, Chopin I'm... or something <laughs> yes. like that. All right, so um, Haley, how do you structure your practice schedule? Mm, good question. Um, let's see. I feel like the biggest thing for me is like sometimes at the beginning of the week, it's not always like this is what I do, but like a lot of times I'll have like a note in my phone that I'll keep track or like a playlist of all the things that I think are cool on guitar. So sometimes I'll like save people's Instagram videos or um, save like a song on Spotify or whatever. And then when I go to practice, I'll, a lot of times like I'll start my practice kind of doing something fun just to get me warmed up or like um, I especially really like to do like a finger exercise mm -hmm. in the beginning. like something sometimes that I'll just make up that's weird that gets my mind thinking like what are you doing so mm -hmm. it kind of confuses like specifically outside the scale like yeah just, like yeah, sometimes just, yeah, yeah that's great or like just a weird pattern that I make up just mm -hmm. to like kind of get my fingers moving um and then a lot of times I'll work on whatever I've been wanting to do and kind of try to you know, actually like get some part of that down that I didn't know. Um, and then sometimes I'll end with like a fun just jamming. Um, I feel like the biggest thing for me too is making sure that I always like enjoy practicing and feel like, okay, like Haley, you're doing great. Like you're, yeah. you're, you're improving somewhat with this because otherwise like it can get kind of discouraging. Um, so I always try to make it feel fun, yeah. you know, do something I'm interested in. That's great. That's, I love that, yeah. Yeah, if it's not fun, I always say, then why are you doing it? Exactly. Be, it's playing guitar, playing, right? So it's like we're having fun. And if it's not fun, now that doesn't mean that sometimes, you know, if you got a gig coming up and there's 50 songs and it's time to just dig in and you don't have a lot of time to do anything else and it's sunny out and everybody else is playing, you're at home working on songs, well then sometimes it's work. But at the end of the day, you're working so that you can play, so that you can have fun, and it, there should be a good give and take of play, and and then pushing yourself, and you know, getting, yeah. getting to be a, a better player as well. Yeah. But some folks, they just play. That's all they do. They learn some cowboy chords, and that's all they do for the rest of their life, and they're really happy doing that, and yeah. that's cool too. Yeah. That's awesome. Just depends what you're wanting yeah. to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, we have a video of you. Oh boy. Yeah, we have a video and I want to ask, um, hey guys, you got that, you have that, that video ready? Yeah, I want to ask what the heck was going on in here because, um, <laughs> and I do not have the live shot here, so you have to let me know when you guys make that live. Ready? Yeah. Well, I can't see it now, I've got a different shot here. Okay, I got it, yeah. <laughs> it makes me anxious watching it. <laughs> okay, so um, tell us, number one, what's going on there? You know, I don't really know. <laughs> Do any of this? Oh, my gosh. Who did you see do this? Who inspired you to, to throw your guitar around like that? Okay, so, like, I'd known someone in college that could do that. And yeah. I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, I would never try that. And then I was like, well, maybe I could try that. And I was, like, at home by myself just, like, mulling over how one might do this. And my right. husband came home, and I was like, I think I want to try, like, flipping my guitar. And 
and he's like, no, no, you're going to hit yourself in the teeth. Like, this ends poorly for everyone. For everyone. Showed me all these videos of people, like, knocking themselves yes. in the head. Those are the best. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very stressful. Yeah. So, like, I, like, did it really slow, and he was, like, filming me, and he at first refused to film me doing right. it. Right. Um, but then, like, I went kind of slow, and then I got it. That was, like, the only take that really I did it, and then I was like, that was so mm. stupid. Why did I do that? Yeah, like, I did it safely, yeah. never again. But you'll see on that post, you were the people didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, people were like, that's the stupidest thing, that guitar is so nice, which actually we traded that guitar for one pedal, so okay. it's really not that nice of a guitar, right, but right. I was like, yeah, I don't think I'll ever do that again, but respect if you're the type of person that can do that at a live show. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I, Mike said, you know, we got this video ready for the show, and I was like, I'm like oh my gosh, I did that. No. That exact thing said that didn't go so well for me. Oh, and no. this was in this is the same this is the Kramer guitar, the the blue guitar, which oh. I had a video of that. But I did it the other way. So like you know I think that's the normal way. Yeah, so well you can do it that way. Ingve Malmsteen does what you do do and he throws it around like that. And Steve Vai, I've seen other guys do that. And if if the strap is like nylon and you have the type of clothes that just slips <laughs> it's like you can do it fairly easily it's a lot and you want to have yeah. yeah i'm not suggesting this at all but mm -hmm. having strap locks is a good thing to do but i didn't have this no i had the strap locks so my guitar wasn't gonna go anywhere right it wasn't going to go anywhere because i had strap locks right <laughs> no no that's not what happened um so i did it and it pulled the screw out of the guitar oh no and i did it this way and so the force went that guitar went straight up in the air oh my and gosh i just remember being like seeing it not being able to catch it and it landed right on its Shoot. neck in the face and it didn't break but there was like a dent like like either here or oh here my gosh. on the edge of the guitar but that was it it should have broken the neck none of the strings or anything bro nothing it oh was my tune. gosh it was so but that is see i'm glad i didn't normal. talk to you before i did that I honestly yeah. was, it was kind of one of those things, like, I felt very, like, high school boy that I was like, yes. I should do this. <laughs> it's, yeah, hold my beer. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> whenever you, yeah, whenever you're feeling like a high school boy and you're like, I should do this, don't do that. Because whatever it is, is probably a really bad idea. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why in high school there's those things that we think, you know, yeah, it's a good this idea. This is good. Um, okay. Let's get to some more questions here. Okay, yep, nice. Thank you so much, Subskip, for posting uh, Haley's Instagram. Friends, if you're joining us just now, this is Haley Powers. You need to check her out at HaleyPowersMusic.com. She's got some great blogs on her website, which is also HaleyPowersMusic.com. Uh, Sorry, on Instagram, it's Haley Powers Music, and same thing with YouTube. Uh, but check her out. She's got some uh, some really cool blogs and some great content on Instagram, all right? Uh, you're so welcome. Seriously, really cool stuff. Okay, so I've somehow gone all the way to the bottom here. Wide neck acoustic. What do you suggest for a more, and the camera's in the way, a more blues style guitar? Hmm, Anthony. Hmm. Um, you know, uh, really... I would have to know what you mean by a more blues style guitar because blues, in my opinion, is what you do with the guitar, not so much the guitar. Um, yes, strats are notoriously known for playing blues, but so are Les Pauls and just about everything, yeah. really. So it's really how you play the guitar. The guitar itself is not going to make it sound any bluesier. Mm -hmm. You can have a guitar sound a little bit more like another guitar player, like Stevie Ray Vaughan or, or what have you, but. Um, if you're playing blues scales and blues chord progressions and bending notes and those sorts of things, riffing like a blues player, it's going to sound bluesy, you know? Uh, do you have any specific bizarre, like, string gauge size or, um, or, or love for any particular... I love Ernie Balls. Do you? They're yeah. actually from my hometown, too. Oh, so, really? Yeah. What is that? San Luis Obispo. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I have on all my guitars now, but I don't know per se if I can feel or hear a difference, but I just, it's, it's what uh, Greg Ellis, my, my guitar tech, uses. So. Okay, yeah. yeah, I know. I kind of like lighter gauge ones. Mm -hmm. I've had to switch, though, to, I used to use nine gauge strings on top here, right. but now I have to use tens because the Jaguar, apparently, like, 
uh, like asymmetrical them. guitars, yeah, you have to use like a heavier gauge string. Really? I know. Why is that? Um, I think it has to do with like how the neck is or something. Okay. So like I've learned something new. Yeah, again. jaguars yeah. are really weird. Yeah, they are. I didn't. Yeah. You have to like adjust the neck, all this stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But I mean, they're, they're ten cool. compared to nine, so not really. And huge so you, difference. Do, you, do you have a problem bending with those? Um, uh, not really, because I mean, ten's not like heavy, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's definitely a little bit different. But yeah. I've kind of adjusted now to it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I just went to nines with all my fenders and keeping my my Gibsons at tens. You know, oh, really? Why shorter, is that? The shorter scale length makes it easier to bend. Oh, just a okay. little bit easier to bend. And so, um, was it the other way around? Dear God, I always get it mixed up. No, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I've got. I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't. I just know I have to switch. Yeah, the the uh, the Les Pauls are easier to bend because uh, it's slight, just slightly shorter huh. than a strap. Yeah, I wonder no, if right. maybe that's something that has to do with the Jaguar. Well. I think so. I think the Jaguar may, may be a longer scale. But see, I'm terrible with stuff like that. I know, with me like, too. I'm, I'm not a, a, believe it or not, I'm not a gear nerd. I have gear to get the job done, but I'm not a good I, a, a I gear nerd. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, not at all. Uh, okay, good, good. Does your hair ever get in the way, Haley? Mm, yes, I think you guys might have seen it getting in the way. <laughs> There's times that I'll like be right here and I'll like be like, why are my strings buzzing? And then I'll be like, it's my darn hair. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe one day I'll chop it all off or get a lob. <laughs> I, used to, I used to have my hair longer than yours at one point. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Do we have pictures a, of this? <laughs> yeah, every now and then I post one on, <laughs> That's on Instagram amazing. that was obnoxiously, <laughs> it was obnoxiously long. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see. Let's see what other questions we got here. So Vivek is, yeah. We, I think he might have you mixed up with another guitar player here. Maybe so. Solo. Okay. Maybe so. Uh, in regards to chord inversions and voice leading, is there a routine that works best for either of you? Is that, hmm. do, you do you have any specific think. thing? If not, I've, um, I've got some things I could say about that. Okay. Um, I mean, a routine that is best, I would say like, I mean, as long as you have the one, the three and the five, mm -hmm. I feel like all you can start it in any order. I don't mm -hmm. know. What, what were you going to say? Yeah. What I was going to say is, you know, I do everything systematically. I just, it's the way my brain works and it's typically the best way to do things anyhow so that you, you know where you're at and where you're going, you know? So like for me, what I'll do is I will take, say like the major scale, G major, and then I'll play my, my triads, right? That's G major. And the triads are major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Okay. I have videos on this obviously if you're in UGS then you've got all this stuff but uh, you could always look up like diatonic chords on YouTube or search your guitar stage diatonic chords uh, but the chords are uh, so the major chords are one four and five the minor chords are two three and six and the seven is diminished so it goes major minor minor major major minor diminished and so what I'll do is I'll play I'll say okay let's let's just do bar chords all the way through. So I'd say like major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and major again. So then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let's think strings two, three, and four. So, so in this case here, I'm taking the whole bar chord form, but I'm just playing strings four, three, and two. And so now what I'll do is I'll just go through and I'll just say, so I have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, which I'm not even going to attempt to do at this, at that, uh, at that bit there, and, and major again, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well now let's do, so that was one, three, five, right? And then I'll say, um, I'll say th uh, three, five, one, or I'll take the one, three, five, and I'll try to figure out some other way that I can play it. Or I'll just play uh, double stops, so two notes at a time. 
Um, but typically what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take one specific key and I'll go through the scale and play it like one, three, five, and then three, five, one, and then five, one, three, and just all those different variations. I have an entire course for doing that inside UGS. So if you're in there already, just look for, just search inversions. Otherwise on YouTube, search uh, your guitar stage inversions or, um, or just inversions in, in general, guitar inversions, and you'll, you'll find this out. Uh, basically, you can take any chord, like a major chord there, and if you just play it, instead of starting from the one, start it from the five, technically that's an inversion, so it may not seem special to you, but when you see guitar players playing inversions, that's the sort of thing they're doing. It's just that now that you've compared it to the standard chord here, you may, it may not be, it may not feel impressive to you, but essentially that's what an inversion is, and at the end of the day, all inversions are a portion of some other chord anyhow, you know. So a chord is just three or more notes played at the same time. When we're more inverting something, we're just taking the notes and playing them in a different order. Or essentially, technically speaking, instead, instead of playing one, three, five, we're putting some other note in the bass. That's typically the inversion that we're talking about. But if you're talking about voice leading and chord inversions, um, that's the way, that's kind of the way I think about it. Yeah, I know that's that was a, a really, long. really good way Sorry. to explain that. Sorry, that was kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome. Like, I didn't, I'm going to practice that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's just so many different ways that that can be done. And then you start going down the rabbit hole and you go, oh, well, that means this, that. And then all, all of a sudden, to me, when I do that sort of thing, it can be boring. But yeah. Like, if you're in it, if you're in it to, to, if it's exciting you, then if you're doing it, then all of a sudden, all of these, like, synapses connect from all these other chord shapes where you're like, oh man, well that means this yes. and that. Yes, everything's connected. Yes. Yeah. That's the best feeling when you learn one new thing and you're like, no. Yes, that <laughs> this means... This connects my entire fretboard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's me. <laughs> all right, so we have someone donated money to the lunch fund today. <gasps> Beautiful. And we're going... Take a horse, horse. Thank you so much, buddy. So we, <laughs> yes, we are all going to go out for lunch after this. If you're, if you're game. I if am. You're, yeah, we'll get a little, little something to eat after this. So thank you so much, horse. That was really kind. Um, so 20 bucks towards the lunch fund. Uh, okay, so you mentioned the Ernie Ball strings. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Love them. Do you work much with uh, double stops? I do, yes. Yeah. Um... Oh, okay. So is, it, is it, that in reference to the... I'm not sure what he, we was talking about, the double stop here, but essentially a double stop is when we play two notes at once. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in very the case... Very country. Yeah, yeah it, it, it can be very country for sure. You can kind of do it in blues too. So like if you're... Can you hear something like that? You know? That sort of thing. So those are kind of a, more of a bluesy way to do it, but then if you're doing diatonically, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and it will help you understand the neck in ways that that you hadn't before. Just thinking about single notes. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right, all right. How, how, many, how many guitars have you had to replace over the years? Is that in reference to tossing them? Oh, yeah, I bet you. Maybe so. Maybe so. How many guitars do you have? Do you have a lot of guitars? Do you have just um, a, a, okay. the ones that you love? Let's see. I have... Um, You're using orange wood now, right? Acoustic? Yeah, you yeah. need orange wood and then yeah. just got a new Taylor, Ooh. which is so pretty. Yeah. So I have four acoustics now okay. and then I have uh, this one my Strat the little parts guitar yeah. the Tele and then am I missing one I thought I had one more maybe that's it oh so wait the and telly, then I have another Jag right so the thin line that you had the, te the Tele that one's gone 
Uh, that one's still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I tossed it, but I didn't actually okay. toss it out. <laughs> okay. Okay. I Just over you, my shoulder. I thought you said you <laughs> traded it for a, for a... Oh, we traded... We got it for a pedal. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I know. What and pedal did you... Did you... Away. I, I can't even remember. It was like it was like three or four years ago. But that's one that I am going to turn into a parts guitar because I love how that thing plays. It yeah. never goes out of tune. It just sounds awesome. So I think I'm going to change out the pickups in that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Um, oh, gosh. How, do we, how do we get feedback from practice online training? Leah's saying. Uh, how do we get feedback from practice on, regarding online training? So, Lee, um, if you're inside of my program then what we do is basically you if you write if there's a, a blog post or a a lesson then you just type in underneath it whatever your question is and then literally I respond to it that day now if you're talking about your own playing like hey I'm playing this Eric what do you think about this or what have you then we would have to do something different uh, in regards to that we're actually going to be working on a product like that where we're, it's gonna be like a boot camp style where we have just a few people in the program obviously that requires uh, more attention and that sort of thing but we are gonna have something special like that Lee but if you want to do something like that for free then get together with other guitar players and say hey man be honest with me what do you think of this oh sounds great slightly out of tune or I don't know your your timing's a little off or whatever but you know it's good to ask for honest feedback because if it's truly that you want to improve seems like we live in a day now where you just everybody's like oh every, everything sounds great it's yeah awesome. you're good you're, you're good. amazing you're good. And it's like okay but if I want to improve like what can I improve on like can you help me improve like tell me what's wrong and then you know so Lee get together with some other guitar players mm -hmm. especially ones that are better it's 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 good to do that because then you can um, you can get so much information from them oh, right yeah even just people that really like music I feel like like my sister she's not a guitar player but yeah. she'll always be like why does your guitar sound so screechy and I'm like yeah. oh my tones up too much or yeah. like I don't know yeah yeah <laughs> sometimes if you're just like in the moment or whatever and you're not really thinking too far yeah. into it um, all right is that dark fire gent? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. Oh, Christine won a lifetime membership. Yay. Awesome, oh, Christine. Yay. Cool, cool. Beautiful. Okay, I think we've adjusted the mic. I think we're good there, hopefully. Let me turn this up a little. Is the mic fine in there, guys? Okay, I'm turning, hopefully that is the one now, all right? If not, please let me know. I want everybody to make sure they can hear us, okay? How do I fix the buzz on the first and second fret, Eric? Uh, Mihal, so there's a myriad of different things that that could be. It could be the nut, it could be the bridge, it could be the neck needs relief. There's lots of different things. Those two frets could be higher. So Mihal, what you want to do is you want to take that to a uh, to a to a luthier uh, who can help out with that. Okay, take that to a guitar luthier and they will look it over the way it needs to be looked over because that can't be you can't do that over the internet. Yeah, it just can't be done. You can't do it over the phone. You need to have the guitar in hand. Okay. Do I need to learn multiple genres in order to be a good guitar player? What do, you, what, do, you, do you have an opinion of that? Um, I mean, I, I personally, I don't think to be a good guitar player, you have right. to like play what you want, but it helps me a lot just because I feel like anything that kind of gets you thinking creatively or like even like learning different instruments has helped, mm -hmm. like learning mandolin for me, yeah. um, kind of gets you out of that same thinking of like, well, I've heard all these licks, you know, in this genre. So I think like I especially like I know a lot of like country kind of chicken picking style. Yeah. So like adding some of that into like blues playing and stuff can just, I think, make it a little bit more creative when you're drawing from different influences mm -hmm, than indeed. what's normal in that genre. Yeah, that's a great that's a great answer. But with that said, and the devil's advocate part of that is Andre Segovia wasn't so bad of a player. And that's all he did was classical. So That's uh, true. Or you know, or do what Joe you Pass. like. Yeah. 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 Do, do what you like and you're gonna be much better at not doing what you don't like. Um, like for me, I love watching a good chicken picker. 
But the thought of me doing it, I just don't, like, I know the work that would go into it. Love Brad Paisley, love what he does. Mm -hmm. But the amount of prowess that is involved in what he's doing, to me, it's not as impressive as, and this is just personal taste. Oh, yeah. When I watch Eddie Van Halen, uh, equally as an amazing player, they're just doing two different things. But Eddie, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, that like pumps amazing. you up. Yeah. 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 So, like, for me, I like a little bit more of that I love flash. Eddie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, because the tone, you know, you listen to, to to Brad, and it's just like a real succinct. Yeah. And, um, this is my tone. Super compressed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, not like, it's not like this is my tone. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right. So, oh, do you have a preference for guitar straps? So are all yours um, locked? Um, well, so this is a new one, actually, oh, that I have. Oh, and you were talking about this strap, right? Ba I think you say their name, Basnier. Yeah, this one is awesome. Okay. So it, you don't have to install strap locks or anything, which is kind of nice, but there's, like, two different parts that kind of fit together like a yes. puzzle. So it really doesn't come off, which also is, like, wow. I, like, it took me a while to, like, take it, put it on and take it off. But once it's on there, I love this one. Beautiful. It's also puffy, so it's yeah, kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've got the, the Planet use. Waves makes one. And yeah. I, you know which one I'm talking about? I don't know which one. I think we have them in the store, guys. Uh, so you can check these out. But they're super cheap. And I have these, like, hanging everywhere. I just, like, literally just, like, bought a dozen. But they, they kind of oh, do whoa. this little bit here. That's cool. So they lock down. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, genius. Yeah, super, super cool. So, and these are, like, seven bucks, I think. They're, they're nylon, so like you can order a bunch of them. I think we have those in the shop, so check that out, kit.com slash yourguitarsage. Cool? All right. Um, we're going to do one little jam here on the way out, um, but I want to tell you about a few things first. And Haley, thank you so much for being here. Thank you're the you. best. You, you are, are the such, best. You're such a I wife, loved this. And <laughs> we're... And we're Giving you a, a hopefully this is your size, what? but a little. Uh, oh my gosh! T Thank you so much. Yeah. and we've got some other ones too. I love so we'll, this. Was that? Ooh, this is soft. Fire. Oh, that's right. We got rapid fire questions as Ooh, well. Yes. Thank okay. you so much. And we, if you don't love that one, we've got others. So, I love right? this one. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a, we've got sweaters and all sorts. Uh -huh. of yes, we have some rapid fire questions. Um, so we haven't done this before, but friends, we're going to be doing this. Oh, I forgot to mention something else, friends. Um, we're going to be doing Rate My Lick. That's right. We're going to be doing Rate My Lick to where you send me a video of you playing, okay? And then we're going to have it on the program. Wouldn't that be so fun? That's like, such a okay, good like idea. Get, get some other folks and, and, okay, they're playing this riff and then we're going to rate it and we're going to talk about it and all that good stuff. That so we haven't is gotten, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a new segment that we're doing um, haven't got it started yet, except we, I think we have the information for that. Do we have the information on the, the description, guys? Uh, it's not in there yet. Oh, it's not. Okay. Just be looking out for it, okay? We're going to let you guys know where to upload those to, okay? So you'll be able to upload those, and then we'll be able to pull them up and put them on the program and all that good stuff, okay? All right. Haley, are you ready for some rapid-fire questions? I'm ready. Okay. Let's hear them. Rapid-fire questions is when we just ask a question. It's just yes or no or this or that, and that's it. Okay. And sometimes you'll see us ask for you guys for these questions, and some of these were from your responses. So, um, so electric or acoustic? Mm, electric, until yeah. I got the Taylor. <laughs> until you got oh, right? Okay, yeah. Um, no, I think Taylors so. are beautiful. So good. Um, a small music venue or... Music festival. Ooh, uh, I think small music venue. Yeah, I was going to say you're I, sm small. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like seeing the people. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, intimate, more intimate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, medium or heavy picks? Uh, now heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, right? I've switched. <laughs> yeah, at first it doesn't feel right, but then, yeah. Yeah, nice. got accustomed to okay, it. Okay, if you could only have one, you're, you're playing worship or you're doing whatever, if you only have one, reverb or, or delay. Mm. Uh, I think for me, reverb. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Why that. Why is that? Um, I don't, I think it, it just fills that space. I could in. turn my reverb on the whole time, whereas delay, there's some parts that you yeah. got to turn it off. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. It can, get, it can get in the way, but it gives mm -hmm. that nice big sound. Yeah, it's so versatile. Get, get, a, get reverb for sure if you don't have, you don't have a reverb pedal. Strat or Tele? Oh, gosh. Uh, or I, Jag. 
Oh man, I. Th- <laughs> <laughs> do you have a strat? I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think strat. Okay. I feel like it just you can do anything, anything with a strat. With a strat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. I love the bluesy sound too. Yeah. Now, pedal board or profiler? Now we had to talk about this, but you're a pedal board gal. Yes. You, you're, you're hearing talk. I'm so hearing talk. I might. So I'm seeing all I this, know. so I don't know. I mean, right now I'm pedal board and I like all my pedals, but I haven't tried. Yeah. Something like a Kemper, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Los Angeles or Nashville? Oh man, I think Nashville. Okay. Because you lived in LA, right? Well, so I lived like four hours north of there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But na- you can't be in Nashville. Right. Right. Uh, Pilates or yoga? Pilates. That's I right. teach Pilates. I love that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done Pilates and that is Yes, that is, seriously, yes. that's awesome. Um, tea or coffee? Coffee. Okay. Caffeinated? Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not like a connoisseur, but Yeah. Early riser or night owl? Uh, I'm a night owl, but then teaching Pilates has made me be an early mm-hmm. riser. Mm-hmm. But I just I'm kind of like a zombie the first right, 3 hours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the you're like a cranky Pilates instructor. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just talk really quiet. <laughs> uh, pizza or tacos? Tacos. Yeah, right? Love it. God, Nolensville I'm Road both. has the best tacos. What is it? Nolensville no, Road, like really? those taco trucks over oh, there. Oh, forget it. I know, so I keep good. wanting to eat there. I'm a oh little my scared. Oh my gosh, you got to try it. Really? No, it's so good. The one, there's one by a gas station that is the best. That's, there's, that's got to be straight up authentic. It is. It's super good. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank Haley. you. Um, do you need to tune or anything like um, that? I tuned here? up. I think I should be good now. Okay. So we're going to do, friends, we're just going to do a little jam for like uh, a minute or two. We've already gone over a little bit, but we're just going to do a little bit of a, a blues jam. Uh, if I can get this track going here, let's see. Yeah, this is going to be a little blues jam in G. It's just 12-bar blues, and if you want this track, you can find it inside of UGS. We've got like 600 jam tracks in there. Oh my lot. gosh, I that's know. insane. A lot, a lot of jam That's track. amazing. And we're making more every day. So um, so here we go. You want to take it first? Sure, I'll G go blues. for it. <laughs>
Yeah. Friends, you know what to do. Go to at HaleyPowersMusic.com on Instagram, on YouTube, and her website, all that good stuff. And we will see you. No live webcast tomorrow. For a little while here, we're just going to be doing Tuesdays. I'm going to be focusing on some other content. Uh, but Tuesday, we'll see you here next time live. And don't forget, yourguitarstage.com slash live if you want to sign up to win this beautiful Les Paul. Ooh. And I'll be teaching uh, <laughs> uh, chords all across the neck. All right? See you. Love it. Thank you so much. <laughs>